what started off as a simple paint adventure turned into much more. Hello, good morning, or whatever time it is while you're watching this. But uh, today I'm taking you on a paint adventure, and yeah, I don't know. I'm really tired. I just woke up. So I'm going to pack my stuff, and then we're going to go. We're going to North Carolina to this place called the Kindred Spirit, which is actually a fascinating little hidden gem in the world, and it's not too far. So while I pack my bag, uh, Virtual Chris will describe what Kindred Spirit is. What's up, it's Virtual Chris. The Kindred Spirit is a mailbox located in Sunset Beach, North Carolina. And what it is, is honestly, it's just a mailbox, but it's much, much more. Look how fascinating these pictures are. A mile and a half down the beach, hidden up in the dunes, you'll find the Kindred Spirit. Put there in the early 80s by a couple, it has been a landmark of Sunset Beach, where people go to write messages, you know, poems, whatever they want, and leave it in the mailbox for whoever to find. Um, back to real Chris. All right, here we are. Just got here. Uh, I'm about a mile and a half down the beach, which is the closest you can actually park, so you gotta walk it, which ain't bad. But it's a little colder than I thought, so I brought my hoodie. I got everything I need, except for snacks. I forgot to bring snacks. What I love about plein air painting is not so much the painting part. That's fun, don't get me wrong. But I love the sense of adventure and finding places like this, you know? Just getting to be outside. And that sounds really cheesy, but you know, it's fun, okay? Leave me alone. All right. So I gotta walk all the way down there. I was too busy looking at seashells and I almost walked right past it. But we're here. Okay. Take a picture of the picture and, and write the story. <laughs> okay. Originally, the mailbox back in '82 was on a smaller yeah, island. Here in Ocean Isle, and it was just, just a sandbar that was an island. So, who am I talking to right here? Well, I guess to give a little more context, I did paint this mailbox two years ago. Here's the video. And so now that you believe me that I actually went there and you saw the actual painting that I did, I'll show another picture right here. Um, I guess I'll let Virtual Chris tell the story. Hey, thanks Real Chris, this is Virtual Chris here. So after, you know, pushing off coming to this mailbox for about two years, I finally went and it was a beautiful morning when I parked and started my mile and a half hike down the beach. Uh, this time, instead of going with the intention of leaving the painting, I went with the sketchbook in hopes of, you know, a great adventure and really studying this scene and leveling up my painting. I've grown a lot, not only as a person, but as an artist in two years. As I'm walking, I'm taking mental notes. The sun is white and glowing, the ocean shimmering, the flat sand that seems to stretch for miles ahead of me, and then the dunes to the right of me that are high as walls. The entire atmosphere had this blue haze to it. It was a very surreal feeling being on such a gorgeous beach with almost no one else. Only passing a few other walkers, there was only one that was heading the same way as I was, to the mailbox. Seeing she was carrying a small bag with something red in it, I figured she was going to leave it there, you know, as often people do. I get to the mailbox first and start setting up as she approaches. She says she's there to decorate the box and I tell her, oh, I'm here to paint the mailbox. And she goes, oh, you're here to paint the mailbox. And I go, yeah, I'm an artist. I, you know, I go places and paint in my sketchbook just for fun and stuff. She said, did you paint it about two years ago? And I said, yeah. She said, was it a small watercolor painting? 
I said, yeah, why? She said, I have it. And at that moment when she told me she had the painting, it really took me back to when I was sitting at that mailbox two years ago and when I ripped it out of the sketchbook, put it in. I always wondered, you know, where it did end up, but I think that was the beauty of the mailbox was putting it in there and kind of letting fate take its control. And now fate has brought it completely full circle and I'm standing next to the person who actually has it. And then, you know, the story just has to get crazier from there. So she's telling me about she has this painting hanging on her wall in Florida and she's here visiting and she helps takes care of the mailbox while she's here and visiting and she's actually leaving to go back home tomorrow. So not only is it wild that the person who has my painting is here with me and I cross paths with them while they're there for 15 minutes, but it's even wilder because she goes on to tells me how her dad and his girlfriend back in the 80s started the mailbox. And it's been a family tradition basically to, you know, take care of it and it's their history. I couldn't even think of a better person for this painting to be with. She goes on to tell me that out of all the things I've been in that mailbox, that painting has been the only thing that she's kept. And that was just wild as an artist and as a person to even have that sort of honor. So while she's there for the 15 minutes, as she's decorating the mailbox, we go on to talk about the mailbox, the history of the place, you know, how the post has always remained the same, but the mailbox itself has rusted out. You know, the memories of the place and the town that she spent there and her dad. I asked her about times that have really stood out to her and she told me some stories, you know, of people who've been there where they were super emotional and, you know, extremely moving. And then once she leaves, I start painting and I'm really taking in the scene and taking in our conversation. And then to me, this is what the kindred spirit really was about. Two people who most likely never would have crossed paths were connected through this very, very specific place during this very, very specific time. I could have came at any other time. Those two years I've always wanted to come back and I always pushed it off for you know some reason or another. And it, I could have even been there the day before or even an hour earlier and we would have, you know, not have had this interaction. But I ended up there the same 15 minutes as she was. And to me, this is exactly why the mailbox was put there. It was not a tourist trap, you know. It was really a way for humans to connect with each other. And it just goes to show that your footprint really means something to someone. And we have a bigger impact on life than we think we really do. I came here with the intention of filming this paint video and finally like talking through my process and it, would, it just became much more than that. So I'm gonna try to talk about the painting. As I sat down, you know, I was drawing as she was there, but once she left is when I finally sat down and started putting paint to the paper. And wow, I was super, super nervous. I almost felt like I had this pressure and this, you know, overbearing, like I can't fail this painting. Even though this is a sketch, this is something I'm doing in my sketchbook for a study and for fun, you know, but I just felt like I couldn't let this down and I just really had to do it. So I started picking up colors that I should not have picked up. My palette is a mess right now. It's not properly set up. And I was just super over my head, you know? Like I started off the bench with burnt sienna. Why would I put burnt sienna? That's not the color. But then again, color doesn't matter. Nothing matters, you know, whatever. I'm just here to have fun. But then halfway through the painting, I started to really get it. And here we are, we're gonna actually take a pretty big jump to the next stage of the painting. And this is when I added all the shadows with the neutral tint from Daniel Smith. And this is when I really started to feel the painting and I felt like it was really coming together. I still felt like I painted a lot of the surfaces too dark, which I have a really bad problem with. I only use one painting cup and I really should be using two for water, but it's okay. You know, this is why I film it and I learn. I am also not a purist for watercolor. I love using white, but only straight out of the tube. So that way those colors really go on a lot more like an acrylic paint. And if you look closely, you can see how my sketchbook is absolutely covered with sand. It's kind of cool. It gives it a nice texture and it's a little memory of where I've been.
What started off as a simple paint adventure turned to a bigger story and a moment that I'm going to cherish for a very long time. I'm happy with how it came out and it was a beautiful day. Now I gotta walk like a mile and a half back.